It's always a good time for a chicken biscuit. So we're just going to start with about two pounds of chicken thighs here that I'm going to trim off the excess fat, not every single bit, but the big pieces like this. Once they're cleaned up, I'm just going to cut the bigger chicken thighs in like half just so they can fit better on the biscuits. Next we're going to make a brine starting with about two cups of buttermilk. This is going to serve as the main seasoning of our chicken. Whatever you put in the flour dredge is only going to season the outer breading. So be generous here and use the same amounts that you normally would for your meat. I'm doing a few big pinches of kosher salt and about 30 cranks of black pepper. I'm also adding just a touch of MSG because I love the magical flavor that it brings, but that's optional if you don't want to put it in there. Finally, a few spanks of smoked paprika for color and a few glugs of your favorite hot sauce if you like it spicy. Now just mix it well and add your chicken. Massage everything thoroughly just to make sure that every piece is fully coated. Also make sure to set it so while you're washing your hands it'll tilt and spill all over your clean countertop. Marinate that at least 30 minutes up to overnight. In the meantime we can make our biscuits. Start with 2 cups or 240 grams of all purpose flour. To that we're going to add a tablespoon or 14 grams of baking powder, quarter teaspoon or 1.5 grams of baking soda, 2 teaspoons or 8 grams of sugar, and 1 teaspoon or 6 grams of salt. Roughly mix those with a fork before adding in most of a cup or 240 mils of buttermilk. I'm reserving a tiny bit to brush over the tops of the biscuits before we bake. Now take a whole stick or 113 grams of unsalted butter that's been in the freezer for at least 30 minutes prior and grate it in with a box grater. Using your hands, gently mix everything together until it just forms a cohesive ball and no more. You don't want to work too much gluten into this and you don't want to melt the butter. Toss it into the freezer for about 15 minutes to rest and to make sure everything's cold before we start working with it. Meanwhile, we can make the flour mixture for our chicken. I don't care so much about measuring my flour dredge because the precise seasoning was already taken care of in the brine. So I'm just dumping a bunch of flour into a baking dish and adding seasonings until I feel good. I like to add salt, pepper, some more MSG, white pepper, some Cajun seasoning, garlic and onion powder, a bunch of smoked paprika, and my secret ingredient for fried chicken is celery salt. I think it makes a noticeable difference and it tastes amazing. Whisk to combine and let's make some biscuits. On a well floured work surface, dump out your partially frozen dough and using your hands begin to form it into a rectangle about a half inch thick. Once there, you're going to fold it into thirds by bringing the two long ends towards the middle, just like you're folding a letter. Repeat this process three more times, pressing into a rectangle and folding into thirds. We're just creating those flaky layers of butter here. I don't have a biscuit cutter, so I'm just using what I use to cut my donuts, which is this large 4 inch wide cup. Now pay attention here because I made a major mistake. I was trying to make my dough wide enough so I could fit two rows of cuts into it, but by doing that I made the dough way too thin and you'll see what that looks like after I bake it. Be sure to leave your dough at least a half inch to three quarters of an inch thick. You can always re-roll it and cut more biscuits on the next go around. Learn from my mistake here. Regardless, cut as many biscuits as you can and place them on a parchment lined baking sheet. I would say you can fit about six per sheet. You can see how thin my biscuits are here. They're going to rise a bit in the oven, but not like a yeast of dough would, so I'm not going to have as many of those fluffy and buttery layers like biscuits are known to have. Just before baking, we're going to brush the tops with that leftover buttermilk that we reserved earlier. This is going to aid in browning. Into the oven at 425F or 220C until the tops are nice and golden brown. Mine took a little more than 15 minutes, but every oven is different, so keep an eye on them. While they're still warm from the oven, we're going to brush the tops with a little more melted butter. Something weird happened to mine. I baked most of them on that brown sill pat that you see, and the bottoms came out almost burnt like this, while the ones that were baked on the parchment paper didn't burn like that. Does anybody know why that happened? To fry our chicken, we're going to fill our Dutch oven or other frying pot no more than halfway with peanut oil, which by the way, I'm excited to try this new induction burner that I got. We're going to heat on high until we can maintain a frying temperature of about 350F or 180C. Meanwhile, let's bread up our chicken, shake off the excess buttermilk marinade, and press into the flour dredge until every nook and cranny is covered. Lay them away from you into the oil and let them fry, just keep them from touching every so often. Fry in small batches so you don't bring down the temperature of the oil too much. I use a thermometer to check for doneness, and I pull my thighs at 175F or 80C. Remove them off to a wire rack to keep them crispy, and repeat with the rest of your chicken. We're also going to make a simple honey butter by literally combining a few tablespoons of butter with a few tablespoons of honey and melting them together in a pan over medium low heat. 
Finally, I figured since I already had some hot oil that I would take some of the waffle fries I had in my freezer and fry them up. I just toss them in a bowl and wipe off the excess oil with a paper towel. I love to add a little Cajun seasoning and toss them up. Now for final assembly, we just cut our biscuit in half, which hopefully yours isn't as thin as mine is, but ni modo. Apply some of that delicious honey butter on both sides, a couple of our crispy chicken thighs, and don't judge me here, but I love Kewpie mayo and I'm putting some of that on my biscuit. You don't have to if you don't want to. Don't forget your fries and let's enjoy this thing. So definitely some mishaps here. Obviously the biscuits were rolled out way too thin. Um, you don't have those multiple amounts of layers as you would have with a thicker biscuit, but I don't yet have the type of real estate or channel to be able to do multiple iterations of something before I publish it. So hopefully in the future, I'll be able to do something a little more improved than this. But regardless, I'm still excited to try this. Fried foods are notoriously forgiving, so I'm sure it's still gonna taste pretty good. So let's try it. First, a waffle fry. Peanut oil is absolutely the superior frying oil. Just makes everything taste amazing. Now let's try this biscuit. Like I said, that chicken is perfectly seasoned and cooked. Using chicken thighs, you have a lot more room for error in overcooking the chicken. So it's perfect in that regard. The honey butter is the perfect simple binder for all the flavors that are mingling inside this biscuit. And in spite of being so thin, you can still taste the flavor of the biscuit. Obviously, I would want it to be thicker. I would want more of that buttery bite, but the ratios and everything else in the biscuit is fine and it's cooked well. Uh, it's just the size of it that's not ideal. Let's give it a little kick here. That is perfection. So I think if you were to try to make this recipe on your own and the only change you made was to roll out the dough uh, about twice as thick as I did. You come out with a staple of a meal and I would definitely recommend making leftovers so that you have meals for a couple days to come because you're gonna keep wanting to eat something like this. It's very addictive. But with that said, this was just a simple video of me sharing the cooking idea I had for today. I just wanted to film it and put it out. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.